It's the truth universally acknowledged that the moment one area of your life starts going okay, another part of it falls spectacularly to pieces. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 craziest movie accents. I don't got no hold over Alabama. <laughs> I just trying to lend a girl a helping hand. For this list, we're looking at the most challenging and out of this world vocal changes that native English speaking actors made for movie roles. Which of these actors pulled off their faux accents the best? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Viggo Mortensen's Russian accent for Nikolai Luzhin, Eastern Promises. There's a large pool of lazy and horrible sounding Russian accents in Hollywood movies. However, the multi-talented Mortensen went to great lengths to deliver an excellent performance. Your uncle knew too much. I was told to send him to heaven with bullet in his head. He plays Nikolai Luzhin, a cold-blooded mobster with a twisted sense of humor. Viggo Mortensen immersed himself in Russian culture and even spent weeks in Siberia to learn the language. He also spoke directly with a mafia specialist for the UN. You belong in there. Midnight people. Stay away from people like me. In the end, his efforts led to a relaxed but spine-chilling performance with a completely realistic accent for most ears. Mortensen's extensive work garnered rave reviews from critics and audiences and earned him an Oscar nomination for Best Actor while sounding spectacular. Okay, now I'm going to do his teeth and cut off his fingers. You might want to leave it on. Number 9. Margot Robbie's American accent for Naomi LaPaglia, The Wolf of Wall Street. Before Margot Robbie was a household name for American audiences, she put a lot of effort into playing a Brooklyn native. It's a really fun accent to do, and it's actually, it's actually easier to do coming from an Australian accent than doing a standard American accent because, you know, there are no R's, so... In this 2013 true crime comedy film, the Australian born and bred actress delivers an impressive performance as Naomi LaPaglia. Robbie had to ditch her native Aussie accent for a super specific Bay Ridge, Brooklyn cadence. So Bay Ridge, that's near Staten Island, right? Brooklyn, across the Verrazano Bridge. Saturday Night Fever territory. That's right, Guinea Gulch. We call the Verrazano Bridge the Guinea Gangplank. Even native New Yorkers were fooled by her excellent performance. And although accents tend to slip in highly emotional scenes, Robbie's Brooklyn voice never wavers. If you agree to the divorce right now, I will allow visitation, okay? Don't try to fight it. Oh It'll save us both a lot of money, and I got a feeling you're gonna need it. While this wouldn't be the last time the actress blew us away with an accent, The Wolf of Wall Street let us know that she was capable of stunning vocal transformations. Number 8. Forrest Whitaker's Ugandan accent for Idi Amin, The Last King of Scotland. In his Oscar-winning turn as the ruthless Ugandan head of state Idi Amin, Forrest Whitaker ticked off every point of the exhaustive laundry list of method acting. And good people, completely. Let me tell you, if I could be anything instead of a Ugandan, I would be a Scot. He gained 50 pounds, spent time with people who were close to the dictator, and crucially learned to speak Swahili. In order to capture a more grounded portrayal of Amin's accent, Whitaker did extensive research. He read books and studied archival footage of the dictator. This room here, it is real. I think your death will be the first real thing that has happened to you. Whitaker's near-perfect East African accent and tremendous performance commanded attention from audiences around the world. After his work was celebrated in Uganda, he took home some of the biggest leading actor awards the following year. I am the father of this nation, Nicholas, and you are most grossly offended, your father. Number 7. Robert Downey Jr.'s Australian accent for Wayne Gale Natural Born Killers. Before becoming known worldwide as the determined Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. played a headstrong and obsessive Australian TV journalist in 1994. I have a television show, and uh, every couple of weeks we do, you know, as part of our thing about current America, we do a, a profile on a different serial killer. Technically, mass murder. Well, whatever you want. While playing Wayne Gale, the actor convinced director Oliver Stone to let him play the part with an Australian accent. But he didn't exactly get great reviews across the board. It's about Manson. Manson picture. 
Well, it's pretty hard to beat the king. Yeah. While some audiences found it to be a convincing Down Under accent, others described it as an exaggerated mix of an Aussie and Kiwi accent. No matter if you think this accent is accurate or not, Downey Jr.'s commitment was undeniable. He definitely gave everything he had to try to convincingly play an Australian character. So tell me, Mickey, any regrets? I mean, three weeks, 50 people killed. Not too cool, Mickey. Number six, Daniel Day-Lewis puts on a vintage Californian accent for Daniel Plainview. There will be blood. In this period epic, the now-retired Oscar-winning English actor plays a pioneering Southern California oil tycoon at the turn of the 20th century. Pray together, we work together, and if the good Lord smiles kindly on our endeavor, we share in the wealth together. Since the character was so specifically tied to an older point in time, there weren't many real people around to pull an accurate accent from. Day-Lewis proceeded to spend hours listening to recordings from that era to get down every idiosyncrasy of the older accent. I do my own drilling. And the men that work for me work for me, and they are men I know. I make it my business to be there and to see their work. After tireless work and dedication, he came up with a brilliant mixture of accents that made him sound unlike most villains we've seen in modern times. Hearing Day-Lewis speak instantly transported us to a bygone era. Do you understand? That's more to the point, do you understand? I drink your water. I drink it up every day. It's no wonder he picked up yet another Oscar for his performance. Number five, Gary Oldman's Jamaican-American accent for Drexel Spivey, True Romance. The masterful Gary Oldman is famous for immersing himself into every single one of the wide range of characters he's played over his three decades long career. Sometimes that means he'll go all in on an unexpected choice. You have a seat, boy. You have yourself an egg roll. We got everything here from a little eye Joe to damn if I know. When playing the exploitative Drexel Spivey, Oldman went for an American accent that would sound tough and authentic. The resulting combination doesn't sound remotely like Oldman's natural voice. No things? What that mean? Hmm? I think you're too scared to be eaten. His scar-faced Drexel has a wild and unrefined manner of speech that doesn't even sound like it's coming out of his body. Despite being on screen for less than 10 minutes in the finished film, Oldman commands attention. I'm still a mystery to you, but I know exactly where your white ass is coming from. Audiences hung on every word that the outlandish yet unforgettable Drexel said. Number four, Alfred Molina's American accent for Rahad Jackson, Boogie Nights. Hey, you wanna say something? Really fascinating. They say there are no small roles, only small actors. London-born Alfred Molina certainly proved that saying with his 10 minutes of screen time in Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights. Come on in, come on in, great to see you. Take a seat, take a seat. You want something to drink? Little pill, little coke, little dope, I got everything. In what is largely considered his breakout Hollywood role, the British thespian dons a silk night robe over his underwear and dances to 80s disco music. Molina also ditched his native British accent for a rambling Californian accent for a phenomenal scene. We wouldn't blame anyone that had no clue the actor originally hailed from London after watching this. I love this thing. I, I make these little uh, mixed tapes together. You know, I put all my favorite songs together. Hey, what song is this? Number, uh, number 11. Yeah. I love it. Melina's work gave us a gaudy and scene-stealing role that stands among a skillful ensemble of actors. Number three, Meryl Streep's Polish accent for Sophie Zawistowski, Sophie's Choice. You cannot talk about challenging movie accents without mentioning the incomparable Meryl Streep. We could have highlighted her performance in doubt. I will step outside the church! If that's what needs to be done, though the door should shut behind me, I will do what needs to be done! No, I'm damned to hell! And admittedly, her work in Evil Angels was a contender too. But her Oscar-winning turn as a European immigrant in Sophie's Choice remains undefeated. You were sent to Auschwitz because you stole a ham. No, I was sent to Auschwitz because they saw that I was afraid. For the film, Streep not only puts on an incredibly polished accent, but she also took it a step further by actually learning to speak Polish and German. Her consistent voice throughout the movie's most challenging scenes is astounding. I am six months in the in here in U.S. and um, so I eat more good now 
than in my life. Streep's skill with a Polish accent once again demonstrates how fantastic she is at her craft. Number 2. Lady Gaga's Italian Accent as Patrizia Reggiani, House of Gucci 2021 crime biopic House of Gucci took the world by storm with its captivating trailers and star-studded cast. While people were eager to hear stars like Jared Leto and Salma Hayek, a lot of eyes were on pop star Lady Gaga. Oh, <laughs> right. That's Bianca. I'm Patrizia. To prepare for the role of Patrizia Reggiani, she tried to spend more than a year living as the Italian socialite. Lady Gaga reportedly spoke in her accent for nine months without breaking. I think it would be a perfect opportunity for you to come and meet the family. What do you think? Your birthday, I would love that. How many candles is it? Though it was a commendable effort, Gaga's accent in the film was regarded by some linguists as sounding more Russian than Italian. With your gift and your talent and your vision, are you kidding? Gucci needs no blood. Goodbye, 1930s. Hello, it is. Ah. It was also compared unfavorably to her co-star Jared Leto's voice. Stop. Stop, you're going to make me. You're going to make me cry. Nobody has ever said that to me. Nobody. Despite a mixed reception to her accent, she received rave reviews for her remarkable performance across the board. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Peter Sellers puts on German and American accents for various characters. Dr. Strangelove the British comic genius Peter Sellers was already a well-established performer by the time he delivered what was arguably his best set of roles in Doctor Strangelove. He played not one, not two, but three vastly different characters. Sellers portrays the eponymous Doctor Strangelove with an outlandish German accent. Based on the findings of the report, my conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent for reasons which at this moment must be all too obvious. He also plays U.S. President Merkin Muffley with a Midwestern American accent. Hello? Uh, hello, De hello, Dimitri. Listen, I, I can't hear too well. Do you suppose you could turn the music down just a little? Oh, that's much better. And last but not least, he played group captain Lionel Mandrake with his natural English accent. Mandrake. <laughs> Realize that in addition to fluoridating water, where there are studies underway to fluoridate salt, flour, fruit juices, soup, sugar, milk, ice cream, ice cream, and drink children's ice cream. Sellers was actually also hired to play an American pilot with a thick Texan accent. Based on his hat trick of incredible vocal performances here, we have a feeling he would have nailed a fourth accent with ease. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.